Hey, this is Dan at reflipper.net. In this video, you will find lots of useful information on wholesaling houses. So let's get started. First off, what is wholesaling houses? Wholesaling houses is a short-term business strategy that involves the buying and selling of real estate contracts. House wholesalers find distressed or undervalued properties, then sign exclusive contracts with the owners to find buyers for their houses. At a high level, the wholesaler first finds and contracts with distressed property sellers, second, finds buyers for those properties, and third, makes money by selling the purchase contract. Now the key to wholesaling houses is that the wholesaler never takes ownership in the property. Only the contract changes hands. This allows the wholesaler to match house buyers and sellers, making money from a transaction spread on the purchase contract. This speeds up the transaction. It also eliminates the risks and financing required to buy and sell real estate. Now, house wholesalers make money by selling the right to purchase a house at a discounted price. The buyer or investor simply purchases the contractual right to purchase the house at a discounted price. The wholesaler does not charge the seller of the house. Now, the, the homeowner is typically in a financially distressed situation. You know, usually that's, that's due to divorce or death or a health problem and needs to convert their house into cash quickly. The homeowner will often agree to sell at a discounted price in exchange for a quick sale. Wholesale house purchases usually do not involve a real estate agent, which means that it cuts out a lot of significant transaction costs. Now we're going to look at uh, wholesaling houses step by step. Step number one is to set up a house wholesaling business. In most states, it's best to set up a limited liability company or an LLC as the legal entity to run your house wholesaling business. This insulates you from potential liability should any of your wholesale deals go bad. Now, a license, either a real estate license or a wholesaling license, is, is not necessary in most U.S. locations to wholesale properties. You don't need to be a licensed real estate agent or, or broker. You simply need a standard business license and a bank account. And you know, look, wholesaling houses is a business and should be treated that way. You're going to need uh, business basics such as a phone, website, printer, business cards, flyers, a letterhead, you know, a CPA, and those sorts of things. You will also need solid wholesale contracts tailored for your state's legal requirements and you should get a lawyer to create those for you. Now the second step uh, is to find undervalued houses to wholesale. There are a number of ways to do this. At the beginning, new wholesalers should network and canvas neighborhoods locally looking for distressed houses. After that, you can invest in direct mail and ad campaigns that target financially distressed homeowners. We will discuss how to source wholesale houses later in this video. Now the third step is to sign a wholesale purchase agreement with the homeowner or seller. Once you've found several distressed houses, you, you approach the homeowners personally or by letter, you offer to, to find them an immediate all cash buyer for their house. And obviously it helps to have these cash buyers ready, right? Uh, homeowners looking for a quick sale will get really motivated when they hear all cash buyer. This means the sale can occur rapidly without mortgage approvals or banks involved. Now the, the purchase price is, is typically discounted significantly for costs necessary to rehab and correct any liens or title issues on the property. These are costs a buyer will need to incur later to make the house marketable. So after agreeing to a wholesale price, the wholesaler and the homeowner will sign an exclusive wholesale purchase agreement. In this agreement, the wholesaler agrees to, to find a cash buyer at or above that specified price 
And once this agreement is signed, the wholesaler can then go and record it at the county recorder's office. The fourth step is then to turn around and sell that contract to a cash buyer or investor. Once the wholesaler has signed a wholesale purchase agreement in hand, he or she offers it to, to sell it to a buyer in exchange for a transaction fee or spread between the price uh, which the wholesaler ag agreed with the, with the homeowner and the price that the, um, the, the, the investor or buyer will pay. Now, there, be some, there may be some back and forth in negotiation on the price of the contract or the parties may agree to a standard fee. The greater the spread, the more the wholesaler makes. Once the parties agree on a price, they execute an assignment agreement. This transfers the contractual right to purchase the house to a new buyer or investor. This assignment agreement is actually embedded in the wholesale purchase agreement, so it's a quick and easy way to sign over the contract to the cash buyer. This is known as assigning the contract. Now the fifth step is to then record the wholesale purchase agreement and the assignment agreement um, at the county recorder's office. This formalizes the wholesale transaction and protects the rights of all the parties. The buyer then pays the wholesaler and proceeds with purchasing the house with cash. Next we're going to talk about sourcing wholesale houses. And this is one of the biggest challenges when getting started um, is finding undervalued properties with willing sellers. So we're going to dive into how to do that. The first and most obvious uh, way to find wholesale houses is through personal networking and canvassing. And when you start first start out wholesaling houses, this is the uh, best method to use. You canvass neighborhoods by car and foot. You focus on your local market. This works best because you can be continuously available for new opportunities when they pop up. And you really get to know your local real estate market and the people. So that, that drives a lot of referral business. Now, when you walk and drive neighborhoods, you want to stop and talk to people, particularly retirees and other people who've been around in the area for a long time. You introduce yourself as a house buyer uh, and do it that way, not um, as a wholesaler, because people won't understand what wholesaling is. So just introduce yourself as a house buyer. Then you ask, do you know anybody who might be looking to sell their house quickly because of a divorce, a health problem, or a death in the family? This will often uncover opportunities. Now just be friendly and build personal relationships. If the individual has a relationship with the seller, it can, this can actually get you warm introductions to, to the sellers. Now, as you speak with people, you want to leave a, a business card or a flyer or a refrigerator magnet with them so that you'll, you're front of mind when things come up. And we found it helpful to add a blurb on the back of your card offering $100 for good leads. Uh, essentially, this is a $100 bounty on uh, wholesale house leads. And you just pick a neighborhood or two and canvas them on weekends when people are out and not at work. What you want to be doing is looking for fixer houses that can be promising investments for fix and flip or re rental investors as you go. Now, the second way you can source wholesale houses is by throwing a wide net using direct mail campaigns. Direct mail prompts the homeowner to phone or email you at a number or email listed on your mailer. This creates an inbound flow of potential wholesale deals if you send enough um, you know, mailings out. Now there are many companies that already offer We Buy Houses with Cash direct mail packages and lists and campaigns at a very reasonable price. So you probably want to start there instead of trying to kind of recreate the wheel and build your own mailing package. Mailers come in many shapes and sizes from letters to postcards to refrigerator magnets. And these are designed to stand out, cut through mounds of junk mail, and get the attention of a homeowner. Another way you can uh, do things is you can include your uh, We Buy Houses with cash flyers uh, with uh, those local discount shopping mailer services. 
Now, almost every city and town across the U.S. has a company or two that sends out mailers with discount offers from pizza parlors and HVAC companies, the landscapers, mobile phone companies, and, and a lot more. These reach nearly every household, and it can be a great way to get the word out broadly at a reasonable price. Now, keep in mind that direct mail is a high-volume, low-probability game. So for every 1,000 or so letters you send out, you may only get 5 to 10 inquiries and 1 to 2 wholesale deals. Now, direct mail requires persistence and repetition. Uh, you know, you're going to find that you may have to send out 5 to 10 pieces of mail per person as part of these campaigns. And you should be prepared to spend five to $10,000 on a three-month campaign. So this is obviously something that has a cost to it, uh, but it's a great way to increase your footprint broadly. Now, the, the, the next uh, uh, way to source wholesale houses is through advertising campaigns. Uh, local newspapers and city rags offer cheap classified sections and you can usually get a substantial discount by buying multiple months at a time. Craigslist, Facebook Local, and local mobile apps are all good places you can run ads for free or even cheap. Uh, you can run for free or cheaply. Uh, Facebook ads, Google AdWords, Bing ads, and Yelp ads, and other digital networks are all potential advertising channels. Some of these networks allow you to, to geo-target your pay-per-click ads to people in specific zip codes. And in some cases, you can even target demographics like age or household income. Local TV stations and cable networks offer ads that reach viewers directly. Beside the cost of creating the video ads, you can buy a substantial number of impressions relatively cheaply. This is particularly true if you run ads late at night or in the early morning. These are times when distressed homeowners are often up and watching television. You can also run ads on a website like webuyhouses.com to get wholesaling house leads. These sites attract millions of visits from people looking to sell their houses for cash. You can run ads or pay for leads from specific zip codes you specify. Uh, you're matched directly with the house sellers through the website. Uh, and finally, another alternative is outdoor display ads. These can be useful as well. Bus stops, benches on, on busy streets, and even highway billboards are all viable ways to source wholesale house leads. It really just comes down to your budget. So another way is, is you can and should leverage other people to find wholesale house leads for you. Um, so if you don't have any time to canvas neighborhoods yourself or you're already tapped out as far as time goes, you can hire an army of teens to canvas neighborhoods for you on a commission basis. You can also hire specialists to visit the county tax assessor's office to find homeowners late on their taxes. Back taxes are a great indicator of financial urgency and there are dedicated paid services that do this. Uh, also, real estate agents can be a great source of wholesaling house leads. Many owners, particularly older people, do not want to pay an agent a commission to market and sell their home. Building relationships with real estate agents in town can get you a stream of client rejects that the agent couldn't land because, frankly, the, the owner won't, won't pay them a commission. And finally, there's a few websites where owners can list their homes for sale directly. A couple of those are FSBO and For Sale by Owner. Um, you're unlikely to find deeply discounted properties here, but it's really worth looking at if you've got good, if you've got good cash buyers in hand. Now, we're going to go ahead and discuss tactics for finding buyers for your wholesale houses. Buyers of wholesale houses are typically property investors looking to rehab and flip or rehab and rent the property. So how do you go about finding these investors? Here are a few ways to do it. Um, first, you can, you can contact the We Buy Houses ads in your area. Uh, these ads are run by property investors and other wholesalers to find properties. These are motivated buyers with access to ample cash. And this, so this is a good way to, to develop investor relationships and turn houses over quickly. 
And the second thing you can do is to attend REIE, or Real Estate Investment Association meetings in your area. Uh, these meetings are well attended by individual and institutional real estate investors looking for discounted properties. And uh, you know, as a side note, you can also check out our list of house flipping investment groups at reflipper.net. Just uh, go to the search box and type in uh, house flipping investment groups, and you'll and you'll find that it's a great resource. Okay, so a third a third way. Uh, to find wholesale house buyers is to run ads online or in your local paper. Running ads uh, is in the real estate section of the paper or online is a great way to find uh, investors who buy wholesale houses for cash. Just make sure to incorporate keywords in your ads like, like below market or cheap and profitable and include an easy way for investors to contact you. Okay, now I want to switch gears a little bit here and, and talk about you know, handling uh, the wholesale transaction, and in this case particularly, handling tax liens. Many wholesale properties you come across will have some sort of tax lien issue. Uh, people in good financial condition generally don't sell their home at a discount to quick cash buyers, so you could assume the owner is in some dif financial distress, and that often means that there's a tax lien on the property. So how do you handle tax liens? when wholesaling. First, it's essential that you consider the cost to cure a tax lien when agreeing to a wholesale house price. You need to do your due diligence by checking with the local tax authority to determine the size of the tax lien on the property. Because curing a tax lien is required to make the house marketable, so it must come out of the sale price at some point. Now also keep in mind that the tax assessor may be in the process of foreclosing on the homeowner when you come along. If the tax assessor has started foreclosing on the tax lien, then you have to get the deal closed fast before the house gets sold at a tax auction. So tax foreclosures are actually a big risk factor in wholesaling houses. You don't want to sign a wholesale contract, then, then assign it to a buyer, then have the house sold at a tax sale before the buyer can make the house purchase. In that case, you would actually need to refund the, the contract sale price plus any associated legal costs back to the, to the buyer of your wholesale contract. So it's, it's important to investigate tax liens and other foreclosure liens. Uh, no matter how much buyer beware language do you include in the assignment contract, if the property sold at a tax auction before the investor completes the purchase, uh, he's going to come looking for his money back. Okay. Now let's talk about uh, the escrow process for wholesaling houses. Uh, the escrow process for wholesaling is, is often poorly understood. However, getting through escrow is essential to close a wholesale deal and you must know how it works. So after a wholesaler assigns the purchase agreement uh, to an investor, the next step is for the wholesaler to take this assignment contract to an escrow company. There, the wholesaler will open an escrow account and submit the signed purchase agreement and the assignment agreement into escrow. Either the wholesaler or the buyer investor will then order a title search. Now, the wholesaler may have already informed the buyer of any known title or lien issues on the property, but this step is necessary to get all the facts. You know, it takes about three to five days to get the title search report and it's shared with both parties involved in the contract. The escrow agent may then ask for other contract-related information, such as beneficiary statements, taxes, a review of transfer terms, and any insurance. The wholesale transaction will then move to escrow closing. The escrow agent will sit down and review the file, ensure that all the terms and conditions have been met, and they will ensure the documents are correct and available for signature. And finally, the parties will meet and sign any necessary uh, documents, and the buyer or investor will transfer the wholesale contract purchase price to the wholesaler. This transaction is recorded and the, f and the escrow file is closed. Now, in the, in the house flipping business, wholesaling isn't the only way to make money. So let's look at, at the uh, wholesaling houses versus other alternatives to make money flipping houses. 
Now, depending on your skills and the time and resources that you have, you may choose one or more of these techniques. First off, there's fix and flip, right? Uh, buying, rehabbing, and flipping houses is good for hands-on types willing to and able to get their hands dirty with construction projects. This is an excellent choice for people in the residential construction business who know what they're doing and have access to reliable, skilled labor. Many fix and flip houses need only cosmetic upgrades, while others require full rebuilds. Fix and flip is the bread and butter of house flipping. So now the other another alternative is to flip uh, houses bought at foreclosure auctions. Flipping foreclosed houses can be a rich source of undervalued properties, but buying the, the right one at auction requires skill, focus, and persistence. It's essential because uh, foreclosed houses sold at auctions usually have a, a, a significant structural or even uh, you know, lien or title issues that have to be cured. So you've got to make sure that you buy them at a really discounted price and don't over, overpay at an auction to make money on, in, this business, in that business. Uh, now, and their alternative is to flip short sale houses. Flipping short sale houses is a common tactic during recessions after big drops in a local real estate market. Short sales occur when lots of houses sit on the market unsold and their owners are underwater in their mortgages. In this case, the bank uh, will often decide to accept a loss on the mortgage balance instead of having to complete a foreclosure and sell the house at auction at an even bigger loss. Now, buying short sale houses requires lots of patience as the bank's directly involved, and short sales require lots of approvals. And your final option is to uh, flip uh, real estate owned or REO properties. Real estate owned by banks that have taken the property back after foreclosing and being un unable to sell it at auction is another option for you. The good thing about REOs is the bank has normally cleared all the liens and made the house marketable before putting it up for sale. Now, the bad thing about REOs is that they're typically sold in the retail market, so finding one at a significantly discounted price can be challenging. The REO market is really good for live-in flippers or people who want to buy the house, live in it, and then flip it, okay, and longer-term rental investors. So now that we've covered the mechanics of wholesaling houses, uh, you might have a lot, of, a lot more questions. Uh, at reflipper.net, we've put together a great resource with lots of answers to frequently asked questions. So just head over to reflipper.net backslash wholesaling dash houses, and you'll uh, find some, some great value. There's a lot of information on specific nuances of, of wholesaling uh, houses. Um, so you know, head over there, uh, check it out. I hope you've gotten great value from this video, and, and good luck uh, making money flipping wholesale houses.